and welcome to this demonstration of our electronic fan controller with the self-sealing fitting. Now this is slightly different to our inline electronic fan controller in that if space is an issue and confined you can mount this externally to allow you to uh, use one of our fans with the controller so very very useful alternative to the inline controller. Now in the kit we have obviously the controller itself, some cable ties for the wiring. There's the cap, the dust cap, which I'll show you later. So we put that to one side. The, the takeoff, now this goes inside the hose, has a threaded portion which screws into the bottom of the electronic fan controller. There's a special sealing pressure washer which compresses the hose to act as the seal. And then we have the, the hole cutter for your rubber or silicon hose. So first of all we need to create the hose, uh, the hole in the hose. So I'm going to show you how to do that. You need to position the cutter inside the hole in a, in a place that's suitable, um, bearing in mind a few things. Now, if you can imagine this is perhaps the, the water pump end or bottom hose end of the radiator, you've got the, the hose on the inside and you're mounting this on the inside as well, or positioning this, so you need to make sure that there's enough clearance from the end of the hose for this to sit without any interference. So once you've determined that it's far enough away from any of the fittings, um, you can quite simply just make a, a mark, for example, and then if you mark it up with a pen, such as that. And then what you do is with the cutter you can put this inside going as far as your red line. I don't know if you can see that. So if I can just get the camera on that and show you. Here. So that's now inside. So what we're going to do now is we need to give it a, we're going to go for a really good hammer blow. Um, if it's a new hose that you're using, and new hoses are best because they're more, more pliant uh, rather than hard and old hoses, which, which aren't so great. So protect your hose with some masking tape, it's simple. And then we recommend the use of a rubber mallet, a rubber hammer like, rubber soft face hammer like this. Um, if you're without one, you could put a block of wood followed by a metal hammer, that's an alternative but these are definitely the way to go. So you just want one sharp blow. Don't worry if it doesn't go through first time. As long as it embeds in the material, you can hit it a second time if you need to. So, so let's do that. Okay. Okay, you can see that came pulled through in the hammer face. So I'll now take that out. We now have our hole. Perfect. So simply place the takeoff outlet inside. There we go. Push that up. Now the special sealing washer has two faces. There's the inner face with the lip on it and the outer with a smooth finish. So we fit it with the inner lip to the material. So down to the hose like that. Okay. And then what I tend to do is leave the elastic band on the wiring and then simply get it started. Once it's started then you can pretty much rotate the whole thing till it starts to tighten. Okay. So you've got two flats here which are perfect for an adjustable spanner so but certainly to get initially and to get it on you can do this by finger it's by hand it's it's fairly straightforward so so there we go we have our unit fitted now having fitted the electronic fan controller to the hose I'm now going to explain the the wiring connections and the electronic fan controller itself how that works so, very simple, 
Before I show you that though, I'd just like to draw your attention to the label that connects the, the relay with the wiring block. Now it says warranty void if removed. I can't stress enough how important that is. So should you have any problems with the unit being powered up, the fan not cutting in, have they made all your connections, please don't be tempted to separate the connecting block from the relay and try to wire it alternatively to how it is. Okay, It's wired exactly how it should be. So. Um, please get in touch with us at that point and we'll do what we can to help you but don't invalidate the warranty by separating the two okay that said there's only three wires to connect so let me explain what what they do and how easy they are to uh, to connect so the two longer and larger diameter wires are the feed wires now first of all you have the red 12 volt supply wire and this would typically go to perhaps a fuse box to the starter solenoid or even directly to the battery. Now if it's going to go direct to a constant live feed such as the battery then you may want to consider fitting an inline fuse. Now we sell an inline fuse kit which is correctly rated for the electronic fan controller and our fans so you can order that at the same time as ordering the kit. So and what that will what fitting it that way means that should you turn the ignition off and the fan's running then the fan will continue to run until it's reduced the the, the coolant temperature by the sufficient amount for it to to cut out again so that is a simple explanation of that um, you can make the same connection to the uh, the on switch side of the starter solenoid for example um, or even a you know a constant live feed on the in the fuse box if you, you know, if you have one if you can locate one so alternatively you fit it to the switch side of the ignition system when you turn the ignition key off of course then if the fan is on it will the power will be cut straight away so you know it depends what you want the fan to do if for example your engine is susceptible to um, to pinking or to bad starting after a hot run or heavy traffic then perhaps you'd want the fan to stay on um, when you park the car just to allow those temp you know, temperatures to be dissipated from under the bonnet, so the fan would run until, uh, and say, until the temperature is brought down enough. So you need to balance that with um, other factors such as an immobilizer, battery drain, etc. Now the fans don't draw an awful lot of current, so battery drain shouldn't really be an issue. But it's something that you might want to consider on your particular application. So that's the 12 volt supply feed. The second f feed wire is. The, the main feed wire for the electric fan. So that would simply connect to one of the terminals on our electric fans. So again, nice and easy, no problems there. And the third wire is quite simply the earth cable for the electronic fan controller. So that has a, a ready fitted ring terminal. And if you wanted to, you could fit that discreetly behind the ready fitted bracket for, for the relay. Alternatively, there may be something nearby, such as a washer bottle bracket, for example, something like that that you could make use of, uh, rather than have to, you know, to drill a, a hole for a self-tapping screw in the bodywork, uh, etc. If you're lucky enough, you may find that your alternator has an earth terminal on the casing, which many of them do. So, if, if, the, if the wiring runs nearby the alternator, you might want to consider simply attaching the earth cable to that. Um, Cable ties are with the kit to ensure that the, when you route the wiring, it's away from any rotating parts, i.e. Um, any fan belts, um, water pump, fan blades, etc. So any rotating parts, but equally anything hot like the exhaust manifold and any controls such as the accelerator cable or choke cable mechanisms. So, so you know, a nice, um, neat installation is what you're looking for. Then once you've done all that, you're then ready to start the engine and allow the, the, the cooling system to warm up. Now, in order to set the electronic fan controller, um, you simply turn this white slotted screw inside the, the unit itself. If I can focus in on this, you can see that 
very simple um, slotted screw head and all you do is to get the initial setting I'm going to turn the screw counterclockwise now that will take it back to 70 degrees which is that setting and what that means is that as soon as the cooling system reaches 70 degrees C the electric fan will be powered up and will start running now at that point you know that your connections are all good and the system is working the way that it should do so you then turn the screw clockwise again and that will have the effect of making the fan stop until the cooling system reaches the temperature at which you just adjusted to. Now while you're doing this keep an eye on your temperature gauge and you're looking for typically a setting just above the normal reading on your temperature gauge so that once the temperature goes above normal the fan will um, be powered up and bring the temperature back down to that, uh, that normal um, setting. So it's just a case of, of doing that incrementally until you get the setting that you're looking for. So quite, uh, you know, quite easy to do. Um, the screw itself doesn't go through 360 degrees. It rotates about three quarters of a turn. So just bear that in mind. And you know, it's it's very very easy to turn. You don't have to be you know, Superman in order to do that. So just treat it gently, and uh, you'll have no problems with that at all. And that's all you do. So, and if at any point you you want to make adjustments, then you know, simply uh, use the screwdriver again. Once you've found the setting that's ideal for your you know, your, 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 your regular use, it might be a good idea to make a marking so that you know where that setting is and then should you make any adjustments for other road conditions you can easily return the, the unit back to that nominal setting that you've, you've created already. So, uh, very simple to do indeed. So, having done that, you're then all but ready to fit the dust cap which protects the, the adjuster screw from moisture and, and dirt and the screwdriver that you've used suggests you keep that in the car put it in the glove box or certainly your tool kit and have it to hand should you you know, wish to make any adjustments while you're out on, on, on a run with your car so that's it very very easy three wires and um, readily adjustable to suit your uh, particular application